Microphone check one two. What is this? Microphone check. Checking. Mic- hello, hello. One two three. One two three. Yeah, one two three. There, we're there. Episode thirty one. Planet Xbox podcast. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Planet Xbox podcast, hosted by Weapon Wheel Podcast and Weapon Wheel's Patreons. We are back with a uh this is gonna be a quick episode you know the news has been very very uh light but xbox has been keeping everyone fed so if you are a content creator if you are a journalist xbox has been making you famous monetizing uh allowing you to monetize all of its uh newsworthy content no repercussions none no repercussions uh we're gonna start this uh thing off uh what are you playing? Did you ever get access to the Final Fantasy thing? That uh, I see that the reviews went live. No, they uh, they decided that uh, you know, someone that lives, breathes Final Fantasy, constantly talks about Final Fantasy. Uh, it's not worth it's not worth getting a review code. But people that tweet have tweeted about Final Fantasy four times in their entire life on Twitter, they got review codes. Uh, you know, it's like, but I, I'm not gonna, you know, repeat. Obviously, people know I have an issue with how, you know, the the industry rewards people that you know try to just speak highly and stuff that they like. Uh, it is what it is at this point. Yeah, but I'm gonna play. The good thing is I, I'm doing more streaming now, mm-hmm. so it doesn't really hurt me too much if I don't get a review code anymore. Because it's probably better if I just stream it anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I haven't been playing. Have I played anything? Like I, I'm number one on the Xbox achievement leaderboard of all my friends list. Um, and that's what me taking. Uh, the last game I played, uh, was was it Banishers? Was it? Was it really Banishers? Did I play anything after? I'm working on a couple games right now, actually. I'm playing Vampire. I'm playing, I decided to pick that back up and move through that story. Uh, that's the game uh, Don't Nod did back in 2018 or 2019. Um, another action RPG game. Uh, uh, that and Banishers is supposed to be in the same universe. I, uh, um, I'm trying to make the connection, so that's what made me want to play it. Um... I've also re-downloaded Dead Rising 3. I realize there's a lot of there's a lot of like side content that I never like uh got through. Uh I've played through the DLCs, but I don't think I finished them all. So um, but that game is hard to um play now because it's it's very dated. Like graphically, the pop-in is horrible. Um and uh the frame the frame rate is cleaned up, but it's not that game was very taxing on the Xbox one early on um that game could definitely use an upgrade but it's fun um been playing uh i've re-downloaded dead island 2 um not because it's on game, game pass, pass but it, yeah it got I on mean, game pass had it for a while yeah but i forgot i i forgot they like had a dropped month DLC. before the game came out yeah they were very generous with their review uh with their yeah, review and, period. and because of that you that's one of the key examples that when people really feel their product, look, I, I even think that game so decently well, considering yeah. considering I didn't expect nothing from Dead uh, Island Two at yeah. all. Yeah, the game was the game was decent, but I want to get through the uh, I want to get through the DLC and I want to wrap up those achievements. Uh, I think I prior to the DLC releasing, I was like I think two achievements away from the hundred percent completion. So I figured I'd just go after them all uh, while I do the DLC run. Try and play with. The dude blitz out the blitz. You know who you are on X and on my friends list, man. Um, and maybe some other people. Maybe there's a lot more a larger pa- player pool now that it's on Game Pass. A lot of people on Game Pass. A lot, even though we think it's so decently, there's still a lot of people that didn't play the game because uh, they probably just written it off. Uh, 2023 was quote unquote a gaudy year uh, for games. Uh, that was one of my favorite You're games right. uh, last year, top five, and I think a lot of people is going to discover how good that game is graphically. They did a good job with that. Uh, the uh, the detail in the zombies, the the gore, uh, man, that game has some moments. I enjoyed that game. I truly enjoyed that game. That and um, Wolong uh, was a, a few games 
that I enjoyed, and of course, Starfield, which ultimately was my uh, game of the year. Um, but let's get into these Patreon questions, and then we'll get on with today's shows. Like I said, we're not going to go too long. We'll probably give you guys just probably just under uh, an hour, uh, but it, it's, it's going to be worth it. All right. Uh, the question comes from Alex King, Alexander King, uh, my weapon will uh, uh, co-panelist. Um, he has four questions. Question number one is, wait, he says, what's up, Big Daddy? I think that's for you, Attic. No, nah, I don't think that's for me. Um, he Maybe says, he thinks you're big. <laughs> he says, uh, Smooth, why are you using a blonde wig for PlayStation gamers? Laugh my ass off. Um, I, when I come up with the perception of uh, the do uh, what they call him Dahmer Smooth or Kid Dahmer or whatever, and then in, in characters such as Nerd Boy Smooth, I, I, get these characters in my head because this is how I vision some of these individuals are on Twitter. Like people in a YouTube comment section, people on Twitter. Like if they if they play the the novel yeah. they'd be saying on Twitter in real yeah. life. Yeah. Like most I, these people aren't like this in real life, but this is how I vision vi- yeah. them talking if it was yeah. real life. Yeah, that's pretty much how yeah, that's the that that's how I came up. It's not like like I just just the the whatever they say, the the things they say on X, how they say it their attitude about things. I, I just said, that's how I envision it. And then I pretty much put, put it out there is how I see them. So when you see me make a character, um, in these skits, I, that's, I, I'm just doing what I see in my head of some of these characters. Uh, and it's, I have a few characters on the Xbox side too, which you guys are going to see in, in, in future, uh, um, skits too, of how I look at some of these people, the, the, some of the people I haven't like, you know, talked to in person. Um, Question number two, he says, now that we're past D-Day, which this is pod, this podcast is about D-Day, um, will y'all welcome PS Gamers on Sea of Thieves? Um, I don't play Sea of Thieves um, often, not enough. Um, I'll, I, I'll try to get back into it. I've been trying to get back into it. Uh, this is going to sound very weird to me, but I think Sea of Thieves, uh, even though I think it's successful, I think Rare did a good job with that game. Some games aren't for me, and I think for me, Sea of Thieves is a difficult game to play. Uh, not that it's, and it's I don't, not saying that it's hard, but for me, is I think, think it's a, a difficult game to play. Not that there's no fun to it, because they made it accessible. You don't have to worry. The thing about Sea of Thieves is a game where you jump in, people are jumping in uh, six years later, and they're not gonna feel behind. You're not gonna. You, it's not a game where you feel behind, where you feel like you're eight, eight behind because everything. There's no real ranking and stuff like that. You kind of just jump in and, and play, and everything you unlock is just everything is all really cosmetics. That's really the progression is is just cosmetics. So you'll see people that look cool, but you're not really missing out. Um, all the missions, all the quests and stuff is still there, which I do want to complete some um some quest snagging because I thought some some of the like the Disney stuff that they incorporated the uh. Uh, what's that? Uh, the Jack Sparrow stuff. Um, what's the name of that series from Disney? Uh, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. I think they did some some cool things with that, and and I'd like to uh, check some of that stuff out. But you know, support. Go ahead and support. You know, I know a couple of weeks ago I said I I hope all these games flop on PlayStation. You know, uh, but you know if you want to play, if you guys because I mean back when these games were Xbox exclusive, they were trash. They were the token for the sixty nine Metacritic score right i think that's what it was so um and now if people want to show off that they have access to the game and they think they is, it's good now uh hats off maybe jeff Keighley and crew will finally nominate see if these for best ongoing game after 10 years who knows but um it'll be crazy if that actually happens yeah i, Did you I don't see how many of the media was saying oh you know see this is a great game but these people have like really not talked anything positive about it for like the longest time yeah yeah absolutely absolutely question number three he says game oh this is for gaming guy he says gaming addiction i, I think that might have auto corrected to that he says gaming addiction why did you put your hands in your blazer pocket on stage you're messing up the silhouette of the suit bro let it be sleek and lay on oh. your prop and, and lay on you hold on let me read that uh read that again he says Gaming Are addiction. You okay? Yeah. Gaming addict. Why did you put your hands in your blazer pocket on stage? 
You're messing up the silhouette of the suit, bro. Let it be sleek and lay on you properly. Because it was just, I've never done anything like that, so I was nervous a little bit. Like I, I that was like in front of like six, seven hundred people. Not to mention how many people were streaming the thing. Like, like it's different. Like obviously I've streamed in front of thousands of people, but I've never been in front of people. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, y'all was on stage. Yeah, y'all presented an award. Uh huh. Hold on, send me the link. I I didn't I didn't see any of this. I only saw pictures. At the video game awards, I I pre- we presented the best VR game. Yeah, send me please send me the link out at some point. I want to see. I didn't know you guys presented an award, but I knew you guys were there. But that that would have been oh wow. That, oh, I got oh, I got to see that. That's cool. That's cool. Shout out, shout out to y'all. ILP. I don't know. I didn't know you guys did that. I didn't see that anywhere. I've only seen pictures of you guys. But I did not see you guys on, like a, a video clip. Um. Yeah. Question four. I saw the skit get six thousand views. Smooth. This is this motivating you to keep going. Are you the next Drewski? Good question. Um, all right, I'm gonna give you guys a little nugget behind the scene, right? So the skits and the content that I've been doing lately has been all addict's idea. He's been asking me to do this for years, and I just kept saying kind of I kind of just rubbed it off, shut it off. I just wanted to do regular videos like everyone else, and he was like, and he was very blunt. He was like, It's not your lane, you you know what I mean? It's it's not that it's not your lane. It's <laughs> Do you have the you have uh, nurtured an audience that really just wants you to make them laugh? Like they don't, and not to mention, like you got a lot of PlayStation people follow you. They don't give two shits about your Xbox opinion. Look at the comment section every week on Planet Xbox, and uh, that will verify what I say. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know the PlayStation people might not want to hear your your Xbox opinion, yeah. and especially you said stuff like Apple should buy Xbox. The <laughs> Xbox people don't even want to hear your opinion anymore. Yeah. But guess what? Both want to hear. They want you to make them laugh. And you know how I knew something was up. You but when you did that uh that the not the this, this skit but the one before that the GameStop skit. Yeah. I saw, I saw big Xbox people, and big PlayStation people side by side saying this shit was funny. Yeah, um, I don't, but as far as it's gets, and just to give people background, because a lot of people think this is sort of new. A lot of people I've already seen like earlier too. So like, oh, leave that to uh, Mighty Keith, man. You're not Mighty Keith and all that stuff. stuff. And cool. And I, and I know, know that was like coming Mighty and it's not the goal. But if people who watch my, my channel uh, when I first, first started 2014, sp- March, spring, summer 2014, all my videos were on Connect. And all I could do, I couldn't do the regular videos like at back then. It was like Red Dragon, um, Anchorman, and uh, Crap Gamer and all that stuff. Uh, I had to do, I had to kind of mix it up. So what I would do is I would do skits, and I would duplicate myself with the Connect, the Xbox Connect green sk- screen feature, and do those on Upload Studio. And that's how the Nerd Boy Smooth uh, came to be about. And I stopped those once I was able to upgrade and get stuff like that. I got my first capture card, my PC, and was able to get video programs and stuff like that. And then I started making traditional videos, right? And I kind of stopped doing the funny videos or the satire videos. And, and, and that's what it's been. So what happened is it got lost. So that's, so that's why uh, Addicts has been on me. He was like, you used to make all the videos that like he that's how used I to make you. back in the day, but you don't do those and you could have been blew up. And I was like... All right, and then once this whole uh, it was just the right time, and I was like, you know what? Let me give it a uh, give it a shot, and like really, really try to do something. So the goal isn't to be the next Drewski, and it's not to even be Mighty Keith because I kind of want my content to be specifically different. I don't want my content uh, to be one to one or very comparable. You could put me in the same genre, but I want to be I want to stand out differently. Like you know, I know what to expect from a Mighty Keith video. I know what to expect from Drewski, and I want you i want people to know what to expect from me that isn't really quite comparable so i mean if doing skits in general puts me in that category that's one thing but i i like my skits are generally longer as more of a storyline uh uh characters are reoccurring um 
and they can take so many different directions. So um, hopefully I need one of them to go viral. <laughs> one of them needs to go viral, like real viral. And uh, maybe maybe it was the GameStop one. I think is, is my favorite one because that was it was all improv. Uh, we we didn't script any of that. Um, and it just came out uh, really good. But good question, Alex. Um, all right. All right. Let's get into it, Attic. So the moment we've been waiting for we got past the rumors we got past the announcement now we got release dates and advertising actually we even got releases pentiment has released on the playstation like almost 5. everything's out right now yeah pentiment has released on the playstation 5 and nintendo i think uh a day ago or two days ago um so that was the first game uh to be released the next game is i believe hi-fi rush next month in, the, in march and see if uh i think and then grounded is also in march right yeah, and then, visually they're already out the really ground oh i thought you yeah, could just only was. wish list them right now uh i i think maybe that's how it was but I yeah remember, i know uh, pentiment was the only one that kind of was like the closest thing to like a, an immediate release but hi-fi rush is next month i think grounded is um is next month and i think sea of thieves is in april um and um the sea of thieves is only releasing on playstation i think uh the switch is getting grounded and pentiment and hi-fi rush is only on is hi-fi rush coming to the switch no no hi-fi rush is only on playstation mm -mm. just probably probably because it can't run yeah okay 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 fair enough fair enough so um and 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 now you no know, is there is tangible these games can be pre-ordered now um there was some discourse so it's still it's hurts like a flesh rune and that's why i think it's important you no know, i think my last skit and the skit that i'm gonna i'm working on now which probably be out i don't know sunday or monday um it's, sh it's shorter it's not going to be as drastic but it's to make a point um but the discourse isn't stopped yet. It's it's actually it's in some cases getting worse because um, people feel like the the marketing you know has picked up a bit. Um, and this is more so where I feel offended as an Xbox fan. And it sounds really horrible, but as an Xbox fan, I do feel offended. Not that these games are coming to play. It's fine. It's cool. I got over that fact, and it is what it is. You know, kudos, good luck. Hopefully, they do well. But I got offended at the marketing because it's like, you know, Pentiment and, and, and this crazy thing is Xbox has been notorious, right? Criminally notorious for not releasing physical versions of these games, right? Um, these games were digital only, which is fine. I mean, my library is digital, but, you know, that's a, that's a, also a marketing beat. That's a, that's a tangible thing that you're placing for sale, right? That's a exposure. Now these games are getting physical releases now that they're on PlayStation and, and Nintendo Switch. Now their promotional material for these Xbox first party games is the Xbox version is in the back with Nintendo and PlayStation versions being the headliners. You got Sea of Thieves uh, Twitter page and I don't care what no, and people, they changed it because of the, the reaction. They changed it, but they changed their location to PlayStation 5. And I people will say that's childish. Why are you mad at that? It's not it's just it's like they Xbox knows, Xbox first party games knows all the PR works at Xbox knows the toxic environment that we in and the toxicity this whole situation have brought about. So why do anything to help fuel it? Just do your little marketing beats and and and, and call it a day. Don't do all the stuff where it look like you're pandering. It's, it's it, the the environment out here is still very tribalistic it's it's it, we're still very entitled to the brand to oh, we, we have like this entitlement is ownership of these ips and stuff like that so yeah it still hurts and the fact that they're doing things more so to it feels like they're flirting with the other brands flirting with the rival platform and stuff like that um I just think it's, it's some metric some measures they've been doing and i don't like the fact that now that your games are on playstation and nintendo you want to market but you didn't do this when your games were available you know it, it had to rely on word of mouth it had to rely on game pass 
it's like everybody's reacting. These studios and their games are acting as if they've been like uh, that they've entered paradise because their games on a, a, a on 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 a PlayStation, you know. But um, it's there, and and people, you know, some people are all right with it, and then PlayStation fans are basking in it. Uh, like you got people like Red Dragon retweeting like Key of Thieves and and rares and 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 it had these games this not happened he would be bashing them or making condescending tweets to them. Um, but now that they're on PlayStation, you know people are now have this weird appreciation for these games that got crapped on. Like none of these games were you know on Game of the Year lists, you know. None of these games were good because none of these games, though, the the highest rated game, well, all right, the well, Pentiment and Hi-Fi Rush are highly rated, but they never got credit. Now they're going to get credit for being decent, like, or really good, right? Really going to get real credit. It's like, instead of being, oh, it's good for an Xbox game, it's going to get a real credit now, you know, real appreciation. And, um, and, that's the more so the issue I have with it. It's more. It's not the games itself. It's the the toxicity behind it. That's going that the culture brings it, and the tone deafness of Xbox and PR that they 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 really can't. They don't understand. I don't think they understand. The the problem is is they're making the Xbox consumer the 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 consumer that has bought all the games that has bought all the platforms seem like they are the last person they're thinking of they're thinking about oh is this playstation fan base gonna like this oh you know it it even like it's something as like small as like not having xbox first party studios as a as a watermark like like if i remember correctly in mlb the show does this say playstation yeah, uh, MLB the show you get that PlayStation splash screen. You get you get it you on get Xbox it when, you put, when you boot the game. Not on like the store. It doesn't say PlayStation Studios. It just say San Diego is the studios is the developer. But I'm saying when you start publish, the game, when you start the game, X- you get the PlayStation Studio start screen. Yes, you do get that PlayStation that room where they show the little IPs and stuff like that. Yeah, you the do get that. The fact that they I don't know if that's a PlayStation thing. They're like, look, you can do this, but you got to change. We don't want that name on our console, but they let them do it. So I'm just sitting here like, okay, so it's okay for one to do it, but not the other. And it's like, if placed if Xbox, if this was a PlayStation thing, and that is on the Xbox version, and they just like, okay, we'll change it, but they didn't make them change theirs. That's bullshit. Because to me, that's that's PlayStation shitting on the Xbox brand. It's like it, it's a. It's Wait, what's the first game? The first game with it. Uh, I, what's the first game? What the, the to do the Xbox Game Studios thing? Oh, Pentiment. Oh, oh, yeah. He oh, said oh, oh, yeah. He, Obsidian he is technically Obsidian is a few. So I, I don't think Bethesda games do that, but I know Obsidian games should do that at this point because uh, at the time that Pentiment yeah, released. So well, I mean, was, well, I guess yeah. we'll see if it happens on um on what's it called on grounded and see thieves Mm -hmm. but it's just like because it really does it makes it seem like oh so you know playstation it's equivalent like jabari saying i don't want that xbox stinks on my platform and Mm -hmm. then xbox okay we'll take it off then it's like i hope that's not what the conversation was and and what's funny is it it's actually worse that that wasn't the conversation that means xbox deliberately took it off just because they didn't want it on there. Like, it's just, the whole thing's crazy, man. And, you know, people sit there all, this is about the console. No, nah, like, people don't realize, like, once you make these moves, there's no going back. Like, this is equivalent to, like, an Xbox One mm-hmm. mess up. And, and it could work out well for Xbox. Or it could blow up and be the reason the company's out of business. Yeah. Well, like, the Xbox portion of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, like I said, it's a decision. Like, if people you know don't like you know my commentary on it, I do think there are people out here taking it out of hand. Uh, the one thing I don't like, and I will not do, and I think the, the thing that I do find corny is that these Xbox guys who feel like I guess and this is when you realize people are in an identity crisis, right? And and you start to realize who they are, what they really want. I don't understand how dudes go from 
I love Xbox to I now hate Xbox. I'm going to criticize everything you do in it, like your whole existence and criticize everything you do. Anytime something PlayStation does good, I'm going to criticize Xbox. It's like, how do you get to that? I, I that I don't understand. It's like I don't agree with the decision either. I don't want them to uh, put games on PlayStation and Nintendo unless PlayStation and Nintendo was putting games on their platform. If everybody if everybody goes multi platform, great. Then I'm a happier gamer because now it's all about preference. And the thing is, with the me to this day, it's still all about preference, and that's why. I can't take the same uh, take that everybody has. I can't be that upset because at the end of the day, it was like, okay, but I still prefer the Xbox. I'm not going to just magically prefer PlayStation. I haven't preferred PlayStation for the better half of 15 years. I had one play, uh, PS4, all right. I had really, what introduced me in the PlayStation was PS2. And the, the primary reason for that was W. I was a big wrestling fan. I've told that story several, several times. So, Xbox has been my uh, primary platform from 2005 onward. And that's not going to change until they stop making Xboxes. Once they stop making Xboxes, then I will uh, probably go on a PC if I'm still uh, gaming, right? But the, the whole like, oh, I'm going to turn into MBG. I'm going to turn into Red Dragon. I'm going to turn into uh, Grinds My Gears. That is like, how do you like, really? And I, I, that... I don't understand that. I think that's that's very fake. Like I said something um when you have a group of Xbox guys, you ask back when Xbox didn't have games, right? And and people were like, "Well, why do you play on Xbox?" People were reluctant to say the exclusives cuz Xbox had no games. So they gave other reasons. They say, "Oh, power or a better console, achievements, uh the community, the ecosystem." The ecosystem, backwards compatible. They will name all this stuff, but exclusives, right? Now, all that stuff still exists. So you're telling me they take away your game. And this is why the skate that I'm working on is funny as hell. But um, you take away the games. Uh, and not, and know what? I'm not going to say take away the games because it, it, shout out to Maddie uh, from uh, Defining Duke. Shout out to the podcast. I don't like the term he used that they're. They're leaving Xbox. The games aren't leaving Xbox. They're just making, they're just available somewhere else that's not an Xbox, right? Um, After they've had mad marketing say that the whole point of their movement in the industry was to was to booster their, their foot, footprint when it comes to exclusives. Mm -hmm. And now it's looking like they're completely backtracking all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, Phil Spencer's saying... The whole point of this was for exclusives, and then him saying, you know, when it comes to the Ori, they were being a little bit inconsistent on what how games came out because I know Hellblade came out even after they bought them. So it's just like at, at this point, it is what it is. You you've lost essentially all the trust in your fan base. They did, they did, and, and you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say who's wrong or who's right. I think the decision that Xbox made uh, to do this, and we know they're gonna continue to do it. Um, they're this is a decision like they have to my i don't i'm just curious to see what they will do but in in, in the back of my mind, i don't think they're going to do anything because x they did they, 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 xbox is notorious for not delivering um i'm curious to see what they can do for an xbox customer right what how are you going to make the xbox customer that's bought your box that's all in on xbox feel uh special what's the benefit like, because at the end of the day, there's got to be a benefit, right? If your games are going to be el everywhere, right, and you're, you're still making hardware, there's got to be a benefit to get it on your platform. If you're going to do that, make it beneficial for your platform. I know Game Pass, Game Pass for sure, obviously, that's one benefit, but you got to do the real deal. Now, if I was Xbox and I'm making my games for other platforms and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm doing the bare minimum. They're just getting ported. None of it is supporting any extracurricular stuff like dual sense or anything like that. None of that. No, nope, it's just going to be base game. It, you take it and leave it, right? You know what I mean? But you get all the bells and whistles on Xbox. But I, I, I'm not going to sit there and turn around. I'm not going to pretend, right, that Xbox doesn't have a, um, like, Xbox, we've never seen a platform holder with this many studios. They have more studios with it they got more first party studios than they can 
put out for to support their own console. So like they have so many studios that they technically really if, if everything was exclusive, majority of their games would just flop. You know what I mean? Unless yeah, there's <laughs> like, too many to go around. There's yeah. too many to to realistically release year by year and not overlap yeah. with each other. Yeah, so and and, I'm, and and realistically, I could think and be like, all right, I get it. That's but, it's just like big games and small games. As yeah, well. but there's got to be some sort of thing. And the thing is, is that you can't take Microsoft on a word. You can't take Xbox on his on a word. But um, if I were them and 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 I'm making games, like all right, there will be like there's just games that's like it's like I would say yeah, it, it would be like fifty percent of the games we release are probably gonna be multi plat. But my tempos are, you know, are my system sellers that I need people to jo- join into my ecosystem. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And but the problem is, is that what they just did, it's a double edged sword, is that you can't say because game you'll get a game that's damn, this is too big to like not be everywhere. And that's where the problem comes, because it's like now there is no like, you know, franchise, you know, exclusive cause cause that well, I mean, if Halo, if Halo was like for example, you could argue for Halo, you could argue for Gears, you could argue for Forza. You know what I mean? Those games are big, and you be like, you know what? They need to more exposure. These should be big sellers. These should be, you know, these should be ten million sellers and stuff like that. And we can't do that unless we release on PlayStation and Switch. So now, I don't trust Microsoft to do anything. I don't trust Microsoft or Xbox to make anything um, it, um, exclusives. Like, I don't trust them to, to have a, an exclusive lineup. So in my mind, um, I've already come to the conclusion that, yeah, Xbox has no exclusive. Like, I, 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 I can't be surprised if Starfield lands on PlayStation, if Avowed, Avowed lives on, uh, stay, uh, releases on PlayStation, if Indiana Jones and, and um, Halo Infinite, Gear 6, like, um, they re- remastered the next three Gears. They, but, like, it would be weird. I, th- I still think it would be stupid because they're in the console business. But at the end of the day, you know, I do like their consoles. I think they make awesome consoles. They make an awesome controller. And I like their ecosystem because I've been able to graduate and utilize uh, their um, my library in multiple points and, and, and still feel like I'm within and you know, but I still prefer my Xbox. But I understand those Xbox fans who who now feel marginalized by Xbox because it feels like now Xbox is prioritizing uh PlayStation and Nintendo over their own, you know, user base. And 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 I understand it. I understand it and um and, and it it sucks. But at the end of the day, dude, when it comes to the games, right? I played maybe 90% of Xbox One and Xbox Series like first party games. Uh, well, I probably, I played 100% of them, but I probably seriously played 90% of them. I can't say it hurts me for Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and Pentiment and all that stuff to go. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to play Pentiment. I, I tried. I, it's not for me. It's the Obsidian game I don't like. I'm, I'm not going to just all of a sudden fall in love for Cynthia. I had five, I have some of these games. We had five years to play four years to play. Um, and, they, and didn't care about them. Not going to just suddenly get upset because it now it exists on another platform. It's like, what's the point? That's like when my kids fight, right? Uh, like my son will, uh, my, uh, son would like be watching TV, right? Get up, leave, go do something completely different, right? No longer, uh, watching whatever is on TV. My daughter grabs the remote, changes the channel, and he's like, hey, hey, why'd you do that? Because you weren't watching it, right? So that's how I look at this whole situation with the uh, this whole exclusive things. But uh, I do expect more games to go. Do I think more games will go this year? Um, it's still early. Um, no. Um, I do think next year there's going to be another batch. It won't be a big deal because they already, they already kind of like – broke us open broke us in so there'll be an xbox wire post or they'll a, a random game would just show up at a nintendo direct or a playstation plus uh but i do i don't care what anybody says about this i do hope at some point playstation not really much nintendo because i don't really play nintendo game, but playstation can real follow suit i don't care about this like yeah they release games on pc which i got a couple playstation games on pc 
but I really would like them. I think it would be cool to see Spider-Man on Xbox. I just want to like you can you can afford to give up one IP, bro. Like give us Spider-Man, dude. Like give us Spider-Man. Like I their PlayStation makes things very toxic. The, prob- the problem the problem is is I don't think Xbox is going to pressure them cuz it would take them. But yeah, okay, we'll give you The thing is is I don't think the biggest things that Xbox could use to their advantage is either the cuts of games because mm-hmm. they own everything from Bethesda and Blizzard at this point mm-hmm. or like yo no more Spider-Man exclusive we'll, we'll give you Elder Scrolls 6 day and day mm-hmm. um, I personally wouldn't want that I, I want Elder Scrolls to be exclusive to Xbox even if it's a timed because yeah. I feel like it would actually benefit Xbox yeah, the brand uh, tremendously. Uh, but problem is, is Xbox, PlayStation's not going to just willingly give that. They're going to have to be forced to. But why not? At this point, Spider-Man 2018, come on, they can afford to just let, the, come on, dude. It's like nobody's buying that anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Spider-Man 2 is selling. Miles Morales is probably still selling. But you can give up Spider-Man 2018 remaster. You can do that. Like, like, like throw us a bone. Like, all right, you know what? We'll give you all that. Uh, can you guys port go over and port Sunset Overdrive for us? Like, get like they they can have these businesses where everybody makes money, bro. Like, why do they? And and, and again, and it sounds like, and I understand that Plus Fear was like, they ain't got phone Xbox, you know, they can't have my exclusive. Not like yeah, just, that, that, just let it be. That's my fear in the matter. Is like we've gotten to the point where it's like, are they going to like? Is PlayStation going to kind of like lay arms down because Xbox essentially like gave up? Mm-hmm. Or are they going to amp that shit up now? Oh, we're oh, getting damn. your shit. So, okay, now only are we going to go after, we're going to continue to try to get Square Enix. We're going to go over there and talk to Capcom. We're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna squeeze the rest of the life out of you. Now, now you ain't going to get your exclusives, and you ain't getting third-party shit either. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, it how hard <laughs> would it be? It, it's not hard. They can, yeah, they pretty much, it's to what Cap. With that being said, right, can't play you just like, all right, Xbox, you know, we want to continue this relationship with Call of Duty. We like to continue marketing uh, for Call of Duty. They just negotiate a deal with the Xbox and they get, they, they get marketing right. And then why would they do that at the end of the day? Here's the thing. It's going to determine how these games do when they come out. That's everything. How yeah. these games do when they launch. Mm-hmm. Are they going to hit their expectations? Are they going to be lower than their expectations, or are they going to knock their expectations out of uh, out of left field? If it does go the latter, and they knock those expectations out of left field, mm-hmm. at that point, I think the money people have all the analytics that they need, everything going. Yeah. Starfield. I still personally feel like Starfield's still in development. What I think mean? they just. Hit, still... I think it's still being made for PlayStation. Because here's the thing: what I was told is it wasn't supposed to come out till after the expansion. The expansion probably ain't coming out till next year because of the pandemic. So you think they would have announced Starfield now anyway? And, and then keep in mind, when Phil Spencer was talking about Starfield and Indiana Jones, he just said it's not one of those first four. They didn't say it wasn't coming. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, right? Now, I, there, there's also the conspiracy theory, you know, in me. Um, cause there's, they, they're still doing that court case right now. What if there's a, a, another dimension, right? Not a, 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 another realm where this could, they, they were like, Hey, we could sacrifice a few games to show goodwill. Cause they, if you think about this whole court case, they've always been saying, you know, we want our games everywhere, we want our games everywhere, we want our games everywhere. Right. And they've been kept being challenged on that. They kept going back to the court case and all that uh, stuff that was said in the past and behind closed doors and emails. And they were like, you know what? Let, let's sacrifice some games, right? What, like, what happens if we don't know it, but Microsoft bent the knee completely the FTC to get it passed? What do you mean? Like, let's uh, the FTC and another company was going after them. The mm-hmm. CMA or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once if one of those companies that came to say, okay, once if we go more multi plat, would you let this deal go through? Because here's the thing 
I don't think it's a coincidence. And this is just a conspiracy. This is probably yeah. wrong. But you mean to tell me that now when this deal gets concluded a couple months later, these games are coming to the competitor's platform and they've never done anything remotely like this to this degree? Just ironically, when the deal was, was, was finalized. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, could the, the thing is, is when they started making these promises, right? The streaming promises, the stuff happened before the deal even closed. But, um, they, but I do think it does work in their favor when you consider the argument that the FTC is fighting, right? The only thing that doesn't work in their favor is the layoffs. No. But every other argument as far as uh, for closing out you know, PlayStation and, and Nintendo and all, this other, and all the streaming services, they've actually acted on their promises there and what they said on court. And then now it was like, okay, why would we make anything exclusive if we literally just put games that don't even belong what? to Activision Blizzard on PlayStation? What do you think if they're going to come at this from this perspective of the now where they're like, okay, everything's a timed exclusive. Everything doesn't matter what it is. We're gonna be very open, mm -hmm. but we picking up Sega. We picking up uh, another like once they start using the fact that they're truly going to be more, you know, uh, they're not gonna really be a competitor mm -hmm. in the fashion in terms of like exclusivities, mm -hmm. but they're gonna be the and and that gives them the wing that they need to to pick up like a Sega, you know, all these other smaller companies, and then. You know, all the majority of the games that make sense are timed exclusive, and the rest of multiplayer and everything's in Game Pass. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think it would be cool, but you you mentioned something, you brought up something, right? And I and this is more so a question to you, to me, and to all the Xbox fans. That I don't know how many Xbox fans actually get to watch this podcast, considering the platform we're on. Um, but I do want to ask this question. Um. Why did we care or why were we excited that Xbox bought studios? Like, why did we care that they bought Obsidian, Ninja Theory, and Exile? Because I thought Bethesda. they would leverage the talent and leverage the games that the talent makes to leverage people to come over to the Xbox platform. Okay. I was excited for Game Pass. I was See, excited I didn't, for, get, I, I didn't give a shit about Game Pass. No, I, the reason why is I started forgetting because it's like, all right, this is an automatic Game Pass subscription and two, obviously, exclusives, right? But why am I excited that it's exclusive? Because it was ammo for us to use to fight this whole console war. Like, it, it, and I'm, I hate to admit it, but it's, it's the truth. It's like, why? Because at the end of the day, was, who truly cares? We, either, if, we, if they didn't buy the, these studios, right? Were we going to buy their games? Did we care about their games, right? Some of them, yeah, sure. Like, I, I, I rock with Obsidian. I didn't, I didn't really rock with Bethesda like that. I, only, I rocked with their, some of their studios, but not the main Bethesda. Um, but most of us really cared because it was like Xbox got games. Xbox got exclusives. Game Pass. We're going to say it, all these good games, all these AAA games going to be exclusive. The concept, uh, it was more also... It's, these games that the per the studios that they bought, their games rate high on Metacritic. The studios that they bought, their games get nominated for Game of the Year. So it was all these accolades and stuff that we cared about to make Xbox look good. So now, when they buy studios like for example, Microsoft could literally announce today that they purchased Square Enix, and I wouldn't care. They can announce they buy Sega, I wouldn't care. They get announced that they're buying freaking Take Two I, or EA. I wouldn't care. I'll be excited for like game. Like this is cool as far as Game Pass and whatnot. But it should now move, moving forward. Any acquisition or partnership Xbox makes should not bother um, anybody from any platform. Not PlayStation. Not Nintendo. And not any of the fanboys because you're clearly not losing anything. Now, when PlayStation makes a move, Xbox fans got something to be worried about, especially if it's a reputable studio that makes reputable games, because chances are we're not getting it at all. Not available to buy, not available to Game Pass. We'd have to fork out either the money to buy a PlayStation or maybe it comes on PC. And, and that's really who really should be bothered. But in this scenario, like, 
Xbox his has a master plan. Um, its fanboys and fan base may not like it, but it's definitely to benefit Microsoft, and they make See, they it, made a move and a decision that really ultimately ultimately makes them win the war. And you lose them battles, you, but they will win the war. <laughs> See, if everything goes exactly the way they think it will, then that's mm-hmm. cool. But the problem is, is when you're making like industry changing decisions, mm-hmm. the shit could blow up in your face just as easy as it can work out for you. Yeah. And we've seen that Microsoft has a habit of trying to jump the gun and forcing the industry to go a direction that it didn't. We've seen it with the Xbox One always online, and we low-key seen it with the Game Pass way. They try to push the whole industry subscription, and did, were they 100% wrong? No, there is a room for subscriptions in the industry. But I will say that it wasn't as much as Microsoft probably thought it was going to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do. I think the biggest uh, mistake with Xbox in this whole entire thing is that I think they should have waited a year for some of this stuff. I think they needed. They should have let this, like see what their chamber can do. What this newfound Xbox can do. Um, I feel like they should have gotten through 2024 and then start talking this mess in 2025. You know what I mean, or whatever. Uh, because I feel like. They just got off this big acquisition, and now there's no more anticipation because people are like, all right, well, they're not really doing anything. Like, it's status quo. Some of these games will launch first on Xbox. Cool. Uh, people will wait. We got proof. We've waited for some of these games that were on PlayStation. It's that Xbox games that are waiting for PlayStation game, they wait. We have to wait longer. Uh, but if you're man, on PC, it's not. That's the part that just irritates me the yeah. most, man, is... We don't know how, you know, people say, oh, Xbox can do this, Xbox can do that, things can work out for them. What the hell is PlayStation going to do? Because to me, if they take this sort of way, it's like, look, we don't have to spend excessive amount of money anymore. We could just put on an autopilot because Xbox has essentially put their arms down. Yeah. That we're going to get them eventually, we just don't know when. Or are they going to say, whoever takes Bill Spencer's job is he gonna be is he gonna be just as uh, uh passive like this as phil is right now or is he going to convince them to go back on the exclusivity shit and mm-hmm. everything's exclusive again yeah so is 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 playstation gonna look at this on let's get them up out of here now why they can't why we can <laughs> that might be that might be the um the energy like i said all it takes on. All it takes is snatching a couple big party, third party stuff. And then before you know it, Xbox is essentially just getting some third party and their stuff timed. And yeah. PlayStation's getting everything else. Now, I do think if PlayStation started playing dirty like that, Xbox would probably cease fire. Like they, they would say, okay, okay, bitch. Like, <laughs> just, I don't think place, I don't think Xbox would allow them to to spin them out of the industry i do think xbox would would reverse everything and maybe that's something playstation's looking at depending on how we act it might make them hit the nuclear code and completely go back because we we've seen through history yeah xbox got no problem pissing off the whole industry reversing shit like no absolutely that and it's just that the thing is though they they really you know rub people the wrong way and a lot of people and again though and the, the, the uh, again though, the industry and the gamers are immature, and, and it's the reason why things can't be the way they are. And, and it's like I would like it. Um, and, and the crazy thing, if you think about it, like you know, you consider Epic, you consider Steam, Xbox, and stuff like that. You look at Nintendo, you look at um PlayStation. Them in in in, in this archaic way of gaming, how we look at uh gaming. It can't. It just going to take a, a while be be to be become platform agnostic. You know what I mean? We're the only medium that can't break that mold. And I need actually. I think it would be beneficial. It would actually be beneficial to all gamers, um, for them to break that mold. And that's really the thing. It's like if we were at a situation where it was just came down to preferences, like that's that's really what's going to change it. If every game is available everywhere 
See, here's the it thing comes too. down to what you want to play on. Here's the thing, too, is regardless what the people that watch this, because I know we got a lot of PlayStation fanboys yep. and PlayStation fans, we do got people that watch us that generally enjoy our conversations. Uh, this is not an Xbox issue. This is a st the sustainability of third uh, of AAA products. Yeah. Because the industry has realized that they have milked the consumers as much as they possibly can. Yep. Xbox tried to pivot with Game Pass and it worked a little bit, but now they're pivoting again and PlayStation's pivoting towards PC. Now, once they drain all the shit they can from PC, where do they think's going after that? Yeah. Now, at that point, they might have spit Xbox out of the industry. We don't know. Like, so they're, they're, so they, they essentially might at least put stuff on whatever the Switch 3 is. Yeah, I, I, I just think it would be very smart. The thing is, because I don't think you're not selling any more copies of stuff like Spider-Man or even the first Death Stranding. Like, just a lot of things that go on Xbox, it give it some more, give it some more, uh, uh, another boost. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's, I think that's incredibly like stupid of them. You know what I mean? Who wants to stop at okay, we sold uh we sold 10 million of this, we sold 10 million of that and you still have an opportunity to sell more if you want to. Just put it out there. Um but uh Attic, we can uh get ready to wrap this up. Um uh we coming in on time. Uh definitely appreciate this conversation. Um, shouts out to the Patreon, Weapon Will Patreon. Make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, subscribe there. Join the Patreon. Uh, we do the show every week uh, for you guys along with the Weapon Will uh, podcast. Attic, you got anything going on before we get out of here? Yeah, so we're having Genshi on IOP tomorrow. He's like a awesome. Japanese influencer. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what's funny is uh, we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, the next week, Thursday, I'm going to be streaming that suck of midnight. I already informed my girlfriend. I'm like, babe, it's a wrap when that game comes out. You know, because uh, I, I, I'll probably have that game beat before IOP. I've been waiting for that game for four years. And then before the remake came out, I've been waiting for Final Fantasy for 20. So it's just like this... This is one of the most my most anticipated games I've ever had. The amount of like shakeness I have just thinking about playing that game is uh it's pretty unreal. But I, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Awesome for for, for sure. Um, I got a uh, I, I got a cool skit. Uh, I got a couple skits out now. Check them out on the channel. Uh, they're doing very good. A couple shorts. I got one, uh, another one. I'm gonna probably gonna be dropping Sunday or Monday um that you drop I think it monday just... don't drop it actually what you could do is you could drop it sunday and premiere it off of uh uh weapon will after weapon will no nah, yeah it's true yeah it's true all right but thank you guys for watching man uh we'll see you guys next week as always xbox is the best box i am the best bot good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe we're out of here peace That was the last minute, Dave, man.